This is Mac OS Ken. Interesting supply chain chatter, noisemakers come and go, and many tales of television. It is Tuesday, the 2nd of November, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Notion. One workspace for your startup. Get up to $1,000 off at Notion.com slash startups. This show is also sponsored by Nebbia, makers of the Nebbia by Moen Spa Shower. Have you ever wanted to hug your shower? There's an 11-year-old in this house who wanted to do just that the first time she tried our Nebbia. The water was just so warm and everywhere. She wanted to hug it. Everywhere that is by design. The Nebbia by Moen Spa Shower has twice the coverage as standard shower heads with about half the water usage. I dig the design. I dig the coverage. It is seriously the best shower I've ever had. The Nebbia by Moen Spa Shower starts at just $199 and for Mac OS Ken listeners, we have a deal for you. Go to nebbia.com slash macOSken and use code macOSken at checkout to get 10% off all Nebbia products. Even better, Nebbia is offering free shipping in the U.S. on their newest shower, Nebbia by Moen Quattro, for just a few more days. Nebbia rarely does deals like this, so this is a great deal to jump on. Again, go to nebbia.com slash macOSken. That's N-E-B-I-A, nebbia.com slash macOSken to check out what they have to offer and save 10% with the code macOSken. If I were going to guess about the decorations in the office of J.P. Morgan analyst Samik Chatterjee, I'd reserve at least one part of one wall for a poster that says, I want to believe. Apple Insider ran a piece on a note he wrote on Monday. The article came under the headline, iPhone 13 delivery estimates hint at improving supply chain conditions. Well, who doesn't want to believe? Based on Chatterjee's note, Apple Insider says an average of lead times across several regions indicated that the delivery estimates for the iPhone 13 mini and iPhone 13 stabilized at 12 to 13 days respectively. Lead times for the iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max moderated to 32 days, down from 37 days in the sixth week. If those times sound long, that's kind of the point. Also, they are shorter here in the States. Here, the piece says, you're looking at 11 days for iPhone 13 mini and iPhone 13. For the Pro and Pro Max, the wait's still close to a month. Waits look roughly the same for the UK and Germany, while waits in China are longer by a few days. Waits for the lower end of the line are between 15 and 19 days, while waits on the Pro and Pro Max side are about 45 days. Kind of funny, that. The wait in China is longer than other parts of the world for phones made mostly in China. For its part, Apple Insider doesn't seem particularly interested in believing. The site points out that lead times are not an accurate indication of demand. Instead, they paint a picture of supply and demand balance. Although sales of the iPhone 13 appear robust, ongoing shipping constraints are likely the main contributing factor for the longer delivery estimates. Despite that, the piece goes on to say, Chatterjee writes that the moderation in lead times hints at supply chain improvements, which could add more confidence to Apple's expectation of very solid year-over-year growth in the December quarter. The not-quite-immovable supply chain is about to collide with the not-necessarily-unstoppable iPad. Another piece from Apple Insider has new numbers from market tracker IDC, They indicate that iPad's market share is growing in a shrinking tablet market. Anyway, that's what happened last quarter. According to IDC, global tablet shipments were down around 9.5% in the September quarter, while iPad shipments were up 4.6%. 
That gave iPad just over one-third of the global tablet market, according to the report. How likely is this to repeat? That is so tough to say. In the wake of Apple's earnings call, a number of analysts glommed to the idea that if people want an Apple thing, but the Apple thing isn't available, they will wait for the Apple thing to become available rather than choosing product from another manufacturer. But the holidays are coming. People will want stuff under the tree or next to the menorah. While iPads won't be impossible to get, they won't be easy either. On last week's call, Apple execs said they expect revenue to increase in every product category except iPad, which will shrink due to supply constraints. Are people looking for iPads for the holidays? Or are they just looking for tablets? You may wonder how it is that Apple knows it's going to miss hard on iPad. An EK report says Apple may be raiding the iPad closet to make sure it has enough parts for iPhone. 9to5Mac highlights the report, which of course quotes nameless so-and-sos. According to the piece, indications are that Apple has cut back sharply on iPad production to ensure that there will be enough components for iPhone 13 production. This way, the company expects to increase iPhone shipments, which have stronger demand than Apple's tablet. I'm not a huge fan of stories like this, and it really doesn't matter either way. I did wonder, though, during last week's call, why components would be so short as to practically guarantee a reduction in iPad sales. Plus, this could explain Chatterjee's improving supply chain chatter. Sounds like Nikkei may have found the answer. The last holdout for products from Apple's Unleashed event is now available to some. Call to Max says Apple on Monday opened orders for the new colorful range of HomePod Mini. No real change for the device except for the candy-colored shells. Yellow, orange, and blue join space gray and white for the same $99 each. The new colors for the small speaker start in a small number of countries, with availability limited to Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. The piece says the new hues will roll out to other territories, including the U.K. and Europe, later this month. Monday was a big, noisy day for Apple and a subsidiary. In addition to the colorful HomePod minis, Apple's Beats started the week with a new set of earbuds. Mac Rumors heralded the arrival of the Beats Fit Pro. I wouldn't say that I am bummed to have my AirPods Pro, though I am kind of bummed that these were not available when I was shopping. According to the report, the new stoppers include silicone tips in three sizes, active noise cancellation and transparency audio modes, adaptive EQ, spatial audio with dynamic head tracking, and an H1 chip for addressing Apple's virtual assistant, and Find My Support, as well as one-touch pairing on iOS, automatic switching among devices on the same iCloud account, and audio sharing. All of that, plus a few colors from which to choose for 200 bucks. As I say, I'm not sorry I have my AirPods Pro, though I do wish these had been an option when I was replacing my original AirPods. Available to order now, the pair I'd have picked, had I been picking a pair, shows delivery as soon as this Friday. Now, with all the new noisemakers available, Apple has decided some of the old ones have to make way. A separate piece from Mac Rumors says with the intro of the Beats Fit Pro, the $130 Beats EP on-ear headphones, the $150 Power Beats, and the $250 Beats Solo Pro are out. According to the report, these Beats headphone options were listed on Apple's online store as of Sunday, but Monday, attempting to visit one of the links for the products brought up a warning that the accessories are no longer available for purchase. If your holiday shopping list includes a thing or things with an Apple logo, Apple suggests shopping soon. A piece from 9 to 5 Mac says in a new banner currently showing on the Apple Store online, 
Apple is encouraging customers to get a head start on holiday shopping amid widespread supply constraints. Sounds both overbearing and dire. Then I went to Apple's online store myself. The message is actually one of three that cycles through. The one from the article says, Shop early for the best selection of holiday favorites. Honestly, that's the kind of encouragement any retailer might give in any year. Still, this year being the year that it is, it's a notable message. If you're worried that you're buying too early, that you might be getting something for somebody that they're getting for themselves, you've got time to return it. The same 9-to-5 Mac piece says Apple has opened its extended holiday return window. According to the company, items purchased at the Apple online store that are received between the 1st of November and the 25th of December may be returned through the 8th of January, 2022. There's more fine print, but that's the window. More news in a moment. But first, a word from Notion. One workspace for your startup. Start as you intend to proceed. If your startup is growing fast and picking up new business, you may think you don't have time to worry about the best way or the smartest way to work right now. You just need to hurry up and get it done. I get that. I've done that. But here's the problem. If everything goes well... When are you going to have more time? Wouldn't it be better to have a suite of tools to make work not only fast, but right as soon as possible? Notion can be that for your startup. Notion is an all-in-one team collaboration tool that combines note-taking, document sharing, wikis, project management, and much more into one space that is simple, powerful, and beautifully designed. For startups, Notion can provide a full-on operating system for running every aspect of your company, keeping everyone aligned as you grow fast and take on more. Don't plan to go back and fix it later. Work better now with Notion. Interested? Want to find out more? Notion is running a special offer just for startups. Get up to $1,000 off Notion's team plan by going to notion.com slash startups. To give you a sense, that's almost a year of free Notion for a team of 10. Again, that's notion.com slash startups to receive up to $1,000 in free credit to use Notion with your team. That's up to a $1,000 value when you go to notion.com slash startups. More trouble for more people on the way to Monterey. I told you yesterday of some folks having trouble with USB after updating to the latest Mac operating system. Now a piece from 9to5Mac has some people saying that the new OS is seriously taxing application memory. According to the report, a number of Mac users are seeing an error message. Your system has run out of application memory. The error is caused by an app using gigabytes worth of memory, reporting more usage than the Mac has until it eventually crashes. Culprits include Mail and Final Cut Pro. 9to5Mac's Ben Lovejoy was actually writing about his own issues with this issue. His happened on an M1 Max 16-inch MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes unified memory. He says he has not seen enough reports to know whether the problem is specific to Apple Silicon-powered Macs or is happening to Monterey machines across the board. Now, annoying as that issue is, it could be worse. Monterey also seems to be making bricks. Mac Rumors says the operating system is bricking older Mac computers rendering them unusable and unable to even turn on, according to a number of reports from users across social media and online forums. The report says this one is specific to older machines, not machines running on Apple Silicon. That appears to be the site's definition of older, though. MacRumor cites at least 10 separate posts on Apple support communities complaining of the problem, 
The first two are from machines made in 2018 and 2019. If you're an Apple TV owner, you can now download tvOS 15.1.1. Just don't ask why. The Mac Observer says Apple released the tvOS update on Monday. The piece says Apple doesn't typically share details in minor tvOS updates, as they're mostly focused on bug fixes and performance improvements. Apple's security page lists no vulnerabilities patched for this one, so... I don't know. Just update for the fun, maybe. If you've got an LG Smart TV that's five years old or less, you may have a free trial of Apple TV Plus available. Mac Rumors says the electronics maker has announced a three-month free trial of Apple's streaming service for folks who own 2016 to 2021 model 4K or 8K LG Smart TVs. Available to new subscribers only, the trial goes on offer beginning the 15th of November and has to be redeemed no later than the 20th of February 2022. More info should be available through the LG Connect store. Apple has signed another first look deal. Deadline says Meadowlark Media will produce premium documentary films and unscripted series for Apple TV+, starting with an emphasis on sports. Starting with sports is not surprising. Meadowlark principals John Skipper and Dan LeBatard are former ESPN colleagues, according to Deadline. Skipper worked for ESPN for 27 years, the last six of which he was president of the sports network. LeBatard, meanwhile, was a host on ESPN radio before taking his show off of ESPN through a partnership between DraftKings and Meadowlark. News of a potentially interesting, potentially quirky show for the Cupertino streamer. Apple issued a press release Monday announcing an order for the series The Reluctant Traveler. Hosted and executive produced by Shids Creek and SCTV alum Eugene Levy, the press release says The Reluctant Traveler will see Levy visit some of the world's most remarkable hotels, as well as explore the people, places, and cultures that surround them. No word in the release on when the reluctant traveler takes off. And finally today, a leak this week from Team Lasso. Well, maybe not a leak as much as a tell. Phil Dunster, who plays the character Jamie Tart on Ted Lasso, tells Variety that the show is going back in front of the cameras at the end of January. If you're looking for spoilers, Dunster says he has none. Asked what's in store for the show's third season, the actor said, I don't know anything. I think they like to keep it fresh. But also, Jason Sudeikis knows what the story arc is. He sprinkles ideas of what's going to come here and there, but there's nothing really specific. They're in the writer's room now, and we'll see what happens. Coming up in a few minutes... Mac Observer Editor-in-Chief Brian Chaffin talks about Apple TV Plus today, specifically why Apple had to get into making its own content, in his opinion. Or Horace did yours. See if it makes sense to you in a few minutes. Find it and listen wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me, and sponsored by Nebbia. Get 10% off all Nebbia products with code MacOSCAN at nebbia.com slash MacOSCAN. This show is also sponsored by Notion, one workspace for your startup. Get up to $1,000 off at notion.com slash startups. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray.
Chao.